all right? So I have a question that I'm gonna put up on my screen uh, and I'd like us to respond to it in the chat if we can, to kind of get us thinking about the next step in this project. And I know some of you have been here you know, every day, um, like Amira, and have been kind of following along with us. Um, others have, you know, been here off and on. So just kind of, oh, who did we lose? We lost Sayana. All right, no worries. All right, so Amira Turan, here is this question. Um, now again, Turan, I know you haven't been with us um, too many days. Um, so if you uh, can't think of anything from the stories we've read because you haven't been with us to read them, you can just think of like stories or movies or shows in general, right? But our question for this morning is, uh, what have been some of the literary devices or tools, you know, things that authors have used, um, that the authors we've read so far have used to portray their thoughts and feelings about love? So in other words, in the two short stories that we've read in class, Gift of the Magi, which is the one about, you know, the girl who sells her hair and the guy who sells his watch. Uh, and the, the second one we read, My Life with the Wave, which is when we just finished about the man who is, you know, has a relationship with the, the ocean wave. All right, welcome back. Uh, so in both, of those, in both of those stories that we read, what are some of the literary devices or what are some of the tools the authors used to portray their thoughts and feelings about love, all right? So again, this is, you know, question is more geared towards people who have, you know, been in class following me along. Um, so Mira, you might need to be the one to, to help us out on this, but you can, um, if you haven't been in class and read these stories, think about other stories that you've read, you know, or movies that you've seen, shows you've watched, and what are the kind of um, ways that those authors portray their thoughts and feelings about love. Do they use a flashback? Do they use something to symbolize a certain relationship, right? Do they compare love with something or someone else? Hey, Darian, welcome, All right? Those are the kind of things we are thinking about. So take a few minutes, and uh, if you can come up with something, I'd like you to put it in the chat. Again, if you haven't been with us to read the stories we've done in class, think about a story that you've read on your own or another story that you know. And tell me what are some of the, the things those authors do to portray their thoughts or feelings about love? How do, they, how do they kind of write about love in the story? What are some of the, the things they do? And like I said, it could be, you know, they use flashbacks. It could be, you know, they use, you know, a lot of symbolism or metaphors. Maybe they use comparisons and they compare, you know, love to another person or another thing or another, um, you know, like a season or something like that. It could be a lot of, you know, descriptive imagery, all right? Anything that comes to mind, what else do we got here? Oh, hey, Sammy, welcome, all right? So for those of you who are just joining us, we are trying to kind of um, answer this question to get our uh, minds in gear for what we're gonna do for checkpoint three. And like I said, I know some of us have maybe not been here every day and, and uh, have been following along. So if that's the case, and you can't answer this question with you know what we've read in class, you can use a story that you've read on your own. But I'd like you to still try and think about this. You know, what are some literary devices um, or tools that authors uh, we've read so far have used to portray their thoughts and feelings about love? And remember, literary devices are things like metaphors, symbolism, right? Descriptive imagery, okay? So if you've been in class and you remember reading are two short stories, The Gift of the Magi and My Life with the Wave. What are some of the literary, literary devices those authors use? If you haven't been in class, think of other stories that you know. 
favorite and what are the ways the authors, you know, what are the things the authors use to portray your thoughts and feelings about love in those stories? So think about this for a minute. I know this is definitely a little bit of a tougher question if you haven't um, been coming to class regularly, but I'd like you to still take your best guess, all right? Or try to come up with something. I wanna see at least two responses come in the chat here, okay? So I'll give you guys a few more minutes to kind of think about this. And again, if you've been in class with us, um, you know, pretty regularly and have been following along with the stories that we're reading, like uh, Amir, I know you've been here pretty regularly, then this should, you should be able to come up with at least something for this question. All right. All right, so what do we think about this? I'm gonna check the chat, all right? So nothing in there so far. So like I said, I'd like to see at least one or two of these come in, all right? And if you can't think of, you know, if you haven't been here with us, you know, you know, in class reading these stories, think about a story that you remember that you've read on your own that has to do with love and, you know, what's one of the thing, you know, one of the, the things the author used to kind of portray those, you know, portray, you know, their thoughts about love. You know, for example, if you've been with us in class and you remember reading that short story, My Life with the Wave, okay? The whole story is about a man falling in love with an ocean wave and they have a relationship, they live together and we can see it's kind of very up and down and we talked about in class that, you know, the wave is kind of acting as a symbol for, you know, another, you know, woman or just a, a partner in general. And we can see their whole relationship is meant to symbolize, you know, relationships that are rocky and where, you know, maybe one person doesn't quite, you know, uh, belong in the relationship and they kind of want something else and then they become, you know, um, angry about it and things like that. So that would be one literary device that that author uses to portray their feelings about love that use that symbolism and that, um, you know, that metaphor of the wave to kind of show, you know, that they think, you know, hey, maybe every relationship is a little kind of up and down, just like the man's relationship with the wave. So that'd be one example of this. So are there any other ones that come to mind from anybody else? And again, if you haven't been with us in class, you can think of another story that you know that comes to mind. But anyone with a thought who can provide us with another example of this. If you can't think of a story, you can think of a movie or a TV show that might help you out as well. Yeah, hey, Faye, welcome. Hello. How are you today? Annoyed and happy. 
Well, I'm glad Happy is on the list. All right, Faye, so we're still kind of getting started here. Since you just joined, here is the question we're talking about today, which you might be able to um, help us out with as well. But uh, what we're thinking about to get us in gear for checkpoint three now is what have been some of the literary devices or tools that the authors we've read so far have used to portray their thoughts and feelings about love. So in other words, literary devices are things like, again, remember symbolism, you know, similes, metaphors, imagery, stuff like that. So what have okay. been some of those things that the authors we've read have used in those two short stories to portray, you know, the way they, they think and feel about love? So I'll give everybody a another maybe two minutes to think about this. You can put something in the chat if it comes to mind. So so we can use hair, right? Oh, or hair. Like, yeah. So you from the about, story from, from the Gift story of the Magi, uh, right? huh? Like from Gift of the Magi, right? Yeah, the um the wife to show her love to her husband was her love for her husband was the hair because he loved her hair, and for right. the wives it was a watch for the husband. So what do we call those things then? Like, what is the literary device that we could that we could assign to the hair and the watch? The word I'm thinking of starts with an S. A simile? Like, not quite. When one thing is meant to represent something else. A mental value? A synonym? A synonym? You know, one object or thing that represents a bigger idea or a bigger picture. What do we call that? Sorry about that. My Wi-Fi has been acting strange lately. Right? For some reason, it's not letting me turn on my camera. But um, what do we call that, Faye, or anybody else? What's the word I'm looking for when we have one thing that represents something bigger in a story or a movie or a show? Any thoughts or guesses from you or anyone else? So it would be a symbol, right? That's the word I was thinking of, right? So that would be like a symbolism. So her... You know, like you said, the girl's hair is a symbol for, you know, how she shows her love. And the guy's watch is a symbol for how he shows his love. Um, so symbolism is one way that that author in that story, you know, shows, you know, or portrays his thoughts and feelings about love. You know, he uses the symbolism of the hair and the watch to represent, like, you know, when you're in love, you sacrifice for somebody. Okay, it's like those things. And I think we could also use symbolism for the second story, My Life with the Wave, right? Because like we were talking about before, right before you joined, Faye, that wave, you know, symbolizes, um, you know, another woman and their relationship kind of, you know, his relationship with the wave symbolizes, you know, other people's relationships in general and how they can be very up and down and, 
things like that. So that's just a little bit of um, an idea of what we're talking about here. That, you know, authors use tons of different literary devices or tons of different tools to show, you know, their thoughts and feelings about love. As we kind of have to pull out from their stories. Right? So everybody with me so far on that? Any questions? All right, again, I don't know why it is now not letting me turn my camera on, but. Something being weird with my Wi-Fi. All right, y'all. So uh, what we're going to do now is with that stuff in mind, I'm going to go over the first thing that we're going to work on for checkpoint three. Okay. So checkpoint three is on summit. All right. It has all been assigned to you. It is right here. It's called art piece proposal. All right. As we start to, you know, sort of wrap up this project. So this one literary uh, analysis essay outline, essay draft, we're not going to do the essay part. So all of these, you know, we don't have to worry about. You can't see them on yours. I'm just showing you on mine yet. But just to show you, we only really have, you know, one, maybe two checkpoints left before the final product, right? So we are getting close to the end. So, you know, keep it up. You guys are doing a good job. So anyway, when we come to checkpoint three on Summit, which you should all have assigned to you, it says art piece proposal. Now, if you scroll down, the first link under resources says art proposal brainstorm. If you click that link, it brings you to a page that looks like this, all right? So if you're able to pull up Summit right now and um, pull this up on your end, please do so, all right? So I'll give everybody maybe like two minutes uh, to try and pull this up on their end and let me know when you have it pulled up. So again, you're going to Summit, finding our class, Creative Writing Term 4, and the project is What is Love, and then you are looking for Checkpoint 3. And then under Checkpoint 3, if you scroll down, you're looking for Art Proposal Brainstorm, and then it should look like this excuse me so please try and pull that up now so when your screen looks like mine give me a thumbs up or tell me that you got it in the chat so i know everybody is there okay if you're on your phone and you don't have your laptop i know summit is a little squirrely so do the best you can but ayana thank you for letting me know you got it that's good everybody else please do the same if you can. Let me know when you have this pulled up. Whoa. All right, give everybody about another like 30 seconds to pull this up if you're still looking for it. Again, if you can, when you have this pulled out, let me know in the chat that you got it.
All right, so as you can see, if you have this pulled up, this is a brainstorm to help you come up with the art piece you're going to make for your um, final product. Because again, this whole project is about love. How do we write about love, which we have kind of covered, you know, you know, how do we define love? And then, you know, how do we portray our thoughts and feelings about love in some way, shape or form, whether it is a short story, like the ones we've read, whether it's a painting, a drawing, a poem, a song, you know, anything like that, okay? So you're gonna fill this out to help you kind of figure out what you wanna do for that. And then our third and probably final checkpoint is gonna be you, you know, writing this art piece proposal where you're kind of outlining for me, um, you know, this is the, the, you know, what I want to do for my art piece. This is what my message about love is going to be. This is the kind of um, figurative language I'm going to use. And, and here's why. And then you're just going to give me that for your final product. All right. So to help us not have to start from scratch, we're going to fill this brainstorm out first. And the hope is that as you fill this out, you'll get a better idea of what you um, might want to do for this for your final product, right? Now, I know some of us are more creative than others. Um, so, you know, do the best you can, but you do need to do something for this final product, all right? So what you're going to do is just kind of basically follow along and fill these boxes out. Most of them, oops, excuse me. Most of them are pretty straightforward and self-explanatory, all right? What do you think about love, right? For women, it's straight without stopping. Fill that out in this box, okay? Write as many synonyms or words that mean the same thing about love that you can. Fill them out here. Write as many antonyms, which is the opposite. Put those here, all right? What have other people told you about love? Put that in this box, all right? You can get as detailed, uh, you know, as as you want here. It can be super detailed, can be not as much, you know, not as, as much detail, all right? Then you're going to kind of fill all of these out, you know, to the best you can. Colors that represent love, symbols that represent love. So we talked about that a little bit already, like the hair and the watch and the gift of the magi, the wave and gift of the wave. Are there other symbols that represent love? So roses or hearts or things like that. <clears throat> All right, and continue filling this out, All right? The figurative language part, this is what we talked about a little, this might be the trickiest part, okay? This is where you're just gonna kind of try to put in one of these for each prompt. So to do that, you have to know what each one of these is. So I wanna go through these real quick, just to make sure everybody has these down. And you know, if people aren't with us, it'll be on the, the class recording. They can follow along on there so that they know what we're filling out for these because you're gonna need to use at least one of these in your final product, okay? So the first one says, write a metaphor about love. So who can tell us either in the chat or coming off mute, you know, what a metaphor is? Like I said, we need to know what each one of these is before we can fill one out, right? So when we're looking at a metaphor, a metaphor is what? Does this ring any bells for anybody from previous figurative language reviews? Any thoughts or definitions, best guesses on, you know, reminding us what a metaphor is? Anybody who can help us out in the chat or come off mute? Faye, Ayana, Mira, any guesses what a metaphor is? I'll put it in the chat as well. It is a comparison. You are right, Ayana. Here is, here is the big question. Does a metaphor use like or as? Yes or no?
No, it does not. You are correct. Do we remember which one of these does use like or as? Assembly. Yes. So now we have the first two knocked out. Okay. So we know a metaphor compares two things, but doesn't use like or as. So if I had to write a metaphor about love, all right, maybe I could say love is, you know, love is uh, a beautiful sunset. All right, something like that. So I'm comparing love to a sunset, but I'm not using like or as, all right? And then if I had to use a simile, I could say, you know, love is like um, your favorite dessert every night. Okay, something like that, all right? Because now I have like or as in there, that's the simile, all right? Lots of love songs, you know, using similes, lots of songs in general, you know, using similes. That's a, a great place to find similes is in, in lyrics, okay? So really good job with those two, all right? Next one is write an example of personification about love. Now we've talked about personification a little because we read a whole short story involving personification. So personification is what? What are you doing? What are you doing to something if you're using personification? If you're stumped, think about what smaller word is inside the, this bigger word here. So what does it mean when you're using personification? And if you were with us in class when we read the short story about the man and the wave, you should know what personification means. So any thoughts or guesses to help us out for this one? We're using personification. What are we doing? as making human things have a non-human reality. You're close, flip it around. It's when we give human traits to something that's not human. So like in my life with the wave, the wave, he talks about the wave like it's an actual person. That would be personification, all right? And so a lot of, you know, examples from that story we could use, we could use here, right? An example of personification um, about love, all right? We could take a quote right from that, right from that story, all right? That'd be, that'd be a good example of um, personification about love or, um, you know, like the giving tree would be, if you remember that short story, that would be another example of personification. Anytime we're making something that's not human seem like it's human, that's personification, all right? Next one is hyperbole. All right, so a hyperbole is what? All right, what are we doing when we're using a hyperbole? Any thoughts or guesses for that one? Hyperbole like exaggeration, yes. Ayana is killing it today, thank you very much. Hyperbole extreme exaggeration. So when you say like, oh, this thing weighs a thousand pounds, it doesn't really weigh a thousand pounds. You're just implying that it's very, very heavy. So that could be what we wanna do here. So what's an extreme exaggeration about love, all right? So maybe you could say like, um, you know, heartbreak is like, you know, a thousand, tiny daggers in your chest or something like that. So we know, you know that's also a simile because we're using, we're using like, but also the thousand tiny daggers part, you know, that's not really what happens, but it seems that way. So that'd be an example of a, a hyperbole, right? An understatement, all right? This one we all pretty much know, all right? An understatement uh, is kind of when you, um, 
are maybe like not giving as much credit to, you know, something as you should. This one's a little bit um, trickier. So if you get stumped on this one and you leave that one blank, that's okay, right? Write an idiom, an expression or saying about love. So an idiom is, you know, like it says right there, an expression or saying. So if any of you have seen the movie Forrest and Gump, and he says, life is like a box of chocolates, that's an idiom. It's a certain kind of phrase or saying that a lot of people have. You all have a lot of idioms that you use every day, all right? Like um, out of pocket, keep it a bean, or any of those things. Those are all idioms, right? They're expressions or sayings that you kind of use a lot. So one of those for love, all right? Um, you know, think about one of those for love. What could you use? There's a lot of these, again, in movies and songs and things like that. So one of these could maybe be, um, like, love is blind. That's a pretty famous one, right? Which means, you know, it doesn't matter how a person looks, you know, or their appearance or anything like that matters about the connection, all right? But that that saying is kind of, a, you know, an expression that has like another another meaning behind it. So that would be an example of an idiom, all right? So you could use that one. You can think of another one that comes to mind, okay? And then lastly, create your own symbol for love and explain it here. And we've talked about this, you know, already. Symbol is, you know, one thing that represents something bigger, right? So can anybody think of, uh, you know, off the top of their head, you know, something that, that could be a good symbol for love or that could symbolize love? Anything come to mind for anybody off the top of their head right now? What would be a good symbol we could use for love? What could, what's something that could symbolize love pretty good? Anything, any thoughts? I know Ayana's been killing it in the chat, so I'd love to hear from anybody else. Faye, Amira, Sammy, Darian, any thoughts from you guys, Trevon? What's a good symbol we could maybe use for love? It's something that can, you know, something small that can represent a bigger, bigger idea, what do we think? Maybe. Say, say it again. I couldn't quite hear the first a part. A picture, definitely. Uh, any specific kind of picture that you can think of? Um, it could be like a picture of you and somebody who died or something. Okay, yeah. So maybe a picture of you and like a family member. That's definitely a type of love. Picture of you and your partner. Maybe a painting. Right, picture is a really good symbol because that picture can symbolize, you know, your feelings for that person. That's why you have the, the picture, right? So that's a really good one. Thank you, Mira. Anything else? Any other ones? Maybe one or two more that come to mind. Songs. Songs is another really good one. Yeah, tons and tons of, of love songs, right? And even also all, uh, also probably other little symbols within that that song, which itself, you know, can symbolize love. So that's a really good one, all right? Thank you for both of those, you know. So that's what you're kind of doing here. You're creating your own symbol for love. So maybe it's a song, maybe it's an object, right? Maybe it's a, a phrase, um, whatever it might be. You know, maybe it's a uh, an image, and you're kind of explaining that here, all right? So then once you fill out all of these, now that we kind of have reviewed what each, each of them are, you know, you know, in this box, you're going to put which types of figure of language do you think best fits the message for love and why? So which of these do you think are most effective to kind of portray your thoughts about love? Write those one or two, you know, one or two of those in here. Tell me why. And then lastly, 
for each of these, you're going to rank it, you know, zero to five, you know, and how much um, you enjoy to watch or consume these types of things. So how much do you enjoy watching dancing, you know, zero to five? How much do you enjoy, you know, watching or consuming drawing, music, painting, that thing, All right? And then same thing, except now you're ranking how much do you enjoy actually doing these things? So how much do you enjoy actually dancing? You know, one to five, how much do you enjoy drawing, playing, you know, playing music, listening to music? Same thing here, okay? And then the last thing you're doing is then <clears throat> based on all of this stuff, you know, pick out what you think is gonna be the best, you know, type of art, piece of art for you to make for your final product, all right? And then tell me why in this box right here, right? So this whole thing is what I'm gonna be looking for um, to be done for next week. Cause we have to do this before we do checkpoint three. Okay. And so again, you can find this on summit. If you go to checkpoint three art proposal and then you scroll down and you'll see the first one here, art proposal brainstorm, all right? That's what we're looking for. So with the time we have left, ladies and gentlemen, which is about 15 minutes or so, okay? Um, that time is gonna be open for you guys to work on whatever you need to work on. I know uh, most of us in here um, are still a little bit behind on um, one or both of the checkpoints for this class, right? So if you want to use this time to get caught up on those, that's fine. If you want to use this time to do the brainstorm for checkpoint three um, and then go back and catch up on the other ones later or like come see me in the afternoon lab, that works too, all right? Here is a link to the YouTube channel for you to watch previous class recordings to help you get caught up that way. And I will also be here on mute if you have questions, okay? But you should be working on something, whether it is that brainstorm that we just went over under checkpoint three or catching up on the other checkpoints that you're behind on. All right. So I'm gonna turn you guys loose to do that and I'll check back in in about 10 minutes or so and then we'll kind of wrap it up from there, okay? If you have questions as you're working on anything, please don't be afraid to let me know. And if you're doing checkpoints one or two, remember you have to obviously use those short stories to fill out the checkpoints. You can access the stories right on Summit. If you scroll down under the checkpoint, you should see the links to the stories there, okay? So like I said, I'll check back in in a few. Um, and I'd like to see you guys all be working on something uh, for the rest of this time. Thank you guys. I feel, yeah, I feel good now. <laughs> Are we on summit doing deck point four? Can you say that one more time, Faye? I didn't quite hear you. Are you on summit doing deck point what four? Yeah, if you're caught up, then you can go on here. Let me share my screen and show you. If you are caught up, you can go on to summit. and go to checkpoint three, which says art piece proposal should be the, the next one you see assigned to you on there. And then 
don't do the actual check one yet. Scroll down and click on where it says art proposal brainstorm. And it should look like this. And that's the one we were just talking about with like, you know, all the types of figurative language and stuff like that. So you're just kind of filling out each box, you know, based on what it's asking you. Pretty self-explanatory. Okay. And when you get this whole thing filled out, then you're ready to go back and do checkpoint three. Okay. Okay. And this has to be done by. Uh, I'm looking for the brainstorm to be filled out by next class, which is Monday. Okay. Okay. So I can, um, I don't have my computer. I'm on, um, I'm doing a Zoom by my phone. My computer's at home. So uh, that's pretty all for today, right? So I can like hang up and then like go on my computer. Uh, yeah. So um, if you don't have your computer with you right now, because I know Summit is a little tricky on the phone. Um, I think you're caught up on both checkpoints. So um, that's what you're working on next. So if you want to um, jump off and start working on that, that is fine with me. So, okay, so I did come to school today, right? Yeah, I have you on my attendance. You're good. Okay. Can you check um, from last week attendance? Because I did come to your class, but I had to end up leaving really early. But I was pretty sure I made it to your class, but it called my parents and told them that I didn't go to school that day. Let me see. Okay. Do you remember which day it was? Um, I'm not actually sure, but I can actually send you an email with it tonight before the end of the night to be pretty uh, sure on the date. Thursday, Monday. Yeah. So I have you marked here for last Thursday, and I have you marked here for last Monday, which are the days I see you. The only day I have you marked absent is for this this Monday. So yeah, maybe you go back and look and like you said, shoot me an email and let me know and I'll double okay. check the attendance. All right, okay? got you. Thank you. Are right, you are welcome. Have a day. See you, babe. And yes, Ayana, if you're trying to get caught up on checkpoint one and two, they are both on that YouTube channel that I put the link for in the chat. So you can check them out on there. I would I always tell everybody start there first. So you know, you know what you're doing. And then if you still have questions with how to do the checkpoint, you can come uh, see me in the summit lab or, you know, shoot me an email or anything like that. Thank you. 
Right, sorry, and I just saw your chat. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> if there's no questions from anybody else, we can kind of wrap it up for today. Um, and remember that I'm looking for that brainstorm to be done by next class, which is Monday. Um, and then that'll lead us into checkpoint three. And then if you're still behind on other checkpoints, uh, make sure you're thinking about how to use your time effectively to get caught up on those. So watch the YouTube videos at the link I just put in the chat. Come see me in the afternoon labs between one and three. All right, stuff like that. Okay, so I will be in lab today from one to three. And remember, it's the same link that you use to get to class. All right, so any other questions before we go? All right, awesome. Thank you guys. Good job. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. And I will see you all on, uh, actually, I will see you tomorrow because we have our all school assembly at 1130 for the second progress report rewards. All right. So uh, make sure you guys attend that and uh, hopefully you hear your name and some uh, shout outs. All right. Thank you guys. See you.